Hi guys, so I thought I'd do another video focused on my finger picking technique this week. Now, <clears throat> I don't know whether you noticed, but I didn't put a video online last week. And the reason was that I, I spent the week in, on the west coast of the, of the States uh, without my guitar as well. So I just flew back into the UK yesterday evening. Um, so this is really the first chance I've had to, to be able to pick this guitar up and start playing again. So I'm feeling quite rusty, actually. Now, what I like to do when I'm first picking my guitar up, when I'm starting to rebuild my technique after I've spent a period of time away from it, is to really focus on that fast picking technique, on that tremolo technique. Uh, and if you've never seen me do this before, the, the way that I'm picking these kinds of fast lines is I use the same picking technique, which is thumb, third, second, first. It's a classical guitar tremolo technique. Which I then adapt to playing lead lines. And I've put a few videos covering this, so if you want to check some of those out, I'll put a link up there as well, if you want to find out more about this technique. But actually what I need to do when I've been away is work on that left hand, right hand synchronization and getting the getting the notes to sound clean again, getting the synchronization correct. And the best way I've discovered for doing this over the years is to work on little short phrases rather than big long lines that you know you just loop over five or ten minutes. Because I find that um, if I play a short phrase then you can emphasize the start and the stop of the phrase as well as the, the fast phrase that you're playing as well. Now what the other thing I've noticed actually um, if you're playing phrases uh, in music, it, you will, if you start and finish on a strong beat, you'll discover that the phrase always has an odd number of notes in it. And the reason why this is interesting to me is because if I can get these phrases sounding smooth and clean, then sort of 60 to 80 percent of all the phrases that I play will have an odd, odd number of notes in as well. Uh, and what does that mean from a playing perspective? Well, from a right hand perspective, if you're using a pick, it means if your phrase starts with a downstroke, it will finish with a downstroke. Or in my case, if it starts with the thumb, it will either finish with the thumb or finish with the middle finger. And, it, and it's pretty easy to demonstrate if you can, if you imagine just playing a, a little looping pattern, if you start and finish on the same note, you can see You've got one, two, three notes, or one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see how there's always an odd number of notes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You see how there's always an odd number of notes? And as I say, if you're always playing thumb second first, thumb third second first, the phrase will either start, start and finish, if you start with the phrase with the thumb, it'll either finish with the thumb or it'll finish with the middle finger. So if you can get used to starting with the thumb and finishing with the thumb or finishing with the middle finger, if you're using my picking technique, then again you'll find you'll be able to praise, play any phrase that starts and finishes on a strong beat. So that's the thing that I tend to emphasise. So what I thought I'd do this week is just show you a couple of really simple lines that I work on when I'm first picking the guitar up and just getting, the, getting things moving again. So let's zoom in and I'll show you. So I tend to use two types of patterns when I'm trying to get my left hand, right hand synchronization going. And they're, they're both just little circular patterns. So the first one is cross three strings, which is like that. So I've got a three notes per string scale. Just take the line across any three strings. And you can see my right hand picking here. So the line's starting with my thumb and finishing with my thumb. Yeah? And actually that top note's with my thumb as well. 
but I tend not to dwell on this because it's a thumb to a thumb movement. And I find a movement that starts with my thumb and finishes with my middle finger tends to be the best one for me to personally practice because if I can get that one right I find the thumb to thumb movements then just fall out and my preference is a nice little small fragment that goes across two strings like that okay can you see how that start the phrase starts with my thumb and I'm doing that thumb Third, second, first, thumb, third, second, first, thumb, third, second. Starts with my thumb, finishes with my second finger. And again, I'll take that across all the strings. strings just like that and just pick up the speed until I can until it starts to move. And once I get that moving then what I do is I start with the second note in the phrase. And again it's the same six notes looping but I play one note on the D string and come back to that root note again. So the line is still thumb to second finger, but you find that this, this actually really starts to stretch your left hand a little bit. It's much more awkward than you may think. And when I've got that working, I start with my little finger and play two notes on the D string. in these little six note groups as you can see or 11 notes in the phrase and I move that all the way across the strings and then then start descending and I find if I can get that working then I've suddenly got the fluency back again between my left and my right hands. That's all it needs because it, it's a nice fast line but it emphasises that start and the stop and it's very clear whether you're, you're hitting the phrase cleanly or not and that's the whole point of this. So as you can see it's such a simple exercise but especially when you start starting with the second note or the third note on the string it really starts to challenge your left hand right hand synchronisation. But if you can get these simple phrases right, you'll see that you'll find that they really do uh, map over to pretty much anything that you play. And once I can get those working again, then I've got my, my skills back on my guitar and I can start moving forward again. So hopefully that was useful for you. I will chat next time. Goodbye.